Like when you have a conversation with somebody who, who becomes an actual lead that goes into the database before maybe you're out there showing them property, is that happen right away? Because the thing I'm just curious about is the, so your funnel is 243 opportunities essentially a week, right? Mm -hmm. Of those yeah. three, how, what's the conversion cycle typically like? Are you finding people at the bottom of the funnel saying, you you showed up at the right place. I'm ready to look at houses this weekend. Or is it taking no, follow-up? It's follow-up, 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 right? You got it. Yeah, lots and lots of follow-ups. So realistically, if you look at those numbers, you're thinking, hey, those li don't line up. But that's the averages because I'm yeah. continually getting deals from doors I knocked on a year ago. 100%. You know? And so that's the beauty of it if it's, it's evergreen. I mean, right. I get people reaching out to me from my follow-up and my emails I send out for these neighborhoods, for the market updates of like, Hey, we're now ready. Can you come over and, and talk to us? Like, absolutely. I'll be there. And so that's, that's what I hit on is putting a lead into a database that's ready. And if they're not actively showing interest, the follow-up game is, is the key. Yeah. And that's, I, I, that's been my experience and that's what I coach too. In, in our experience in doing this for 17 years, we, we look at, we just looked at a huge study. I just broke down this study with the owner of Vulcan 7. And mm -hmm. we found that 95% of closings in our industry come through lead follow-up, not the initial contact. Yeah. Now, do you find roughly in that world that it's generally the same? Meaning it's very rare for you to knock on a door and someone's ready to put an offer on a house tonight, right? That's most of the, your business is coming through some type of follow-up over a course of time. Would you say that's fair and accurate? Totally. The, the other thing I would say is with door knocking, it, it's a, not an immediate process where they're jumping into buying or selling immediately. It's over the next couple of months, but it's consistent appointments, baby steps until they're ready. And so I, don't, I wouldn't say it's cold follow-up where I'm putting them on a drip campaign and emailing them. It's a lot of active follow-up of like appointments and going back, staying in touch with them, re-knocking the neighborhood and just saying, hey, wanted to bring by a market update. I recently sold a house down the street. This is kind of the current pricing. That's where the money's made because you have already built that relationship. Now you just got to stay in touch with those people. Yeah. And you said at the beginning of, of the show, and I can't agree uh, uh, enough, is like the visual for everybody listening to this podcast is we're just talking about pipeline maturity. So if you look at a sales pipeline, you, you, you articulated it perfect, right? We're putting people on top of the funnel. The follow-up is working people down the funnel until mm -hmm. that leads in your, in your process to a showing, right? Mm -hmm. And so regardless of how it works, for everybody listening, that's what Cameron and I are talking about is pipeline maturity. And things very rarely go from the top of the pipeline to the bottom of the pipeline which is what realtors want. They're addicted to instant gratification. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. You have to build a pipeline. You've got to nurture the pipeline. You got to follow with the pipeline to get paid. Would you agree with that? Totally. The and honestly, there there are some crazy times where it's fast. Absolutely. I mean, I've yeah. had deals where um, the quickest I've ever had is 24 hours. I knocked on a door, showed him homes right there. He invited me in. We went out, looked at the house, put it under contract, and his house was listed the next day. It was nuts. And so that's a complete one-off. Agents are addicted to that type of thing where like, I'm going to go door knocking today and I'm going to have a listing tomorrow. It's like, no, you're not. You're going to have a listing in six months. Yeah, that's and right. so you got to consistently go out day after day to get to that point. So that, I mean, oh my gosh, that's, I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm looking at my other screen right now and the study that we broke down mm -hmm. and you nailed it. So 2% of the time is what we found in the study of prospects that are ready to go right now, 2%. Yeah. So this For means 98% sure. of the time we're, it's a three, four, five, six month conversion cycle in our yeah. industry. Yeah. yeah. So uh, last thing I want to talk about, um, well, a couple, couple last things I shouldn't overpromise. Uh, <laughs> you said something before we got started with the show, that you didn't experience the same success with the phone. And so yep. I want to understand that. So if you were to call through these same exact neighborhoods that you've identified as like your gold mine, but you just called them, walk us through why that didn't work for you. Uh, it's a great question. I think I have to say 
a part of it is training. I don't think I knew enough at that point to be successful on the phones. But another part of it is I think I am kind of that monotone, boring guy over the phone. I don't know if I have nailed down how to have that conversation over the phone. I'm much more in person. I have body language that I want to share with the person on the door. And so for me, I didn't think I had as much success with the phone because I couldn't be myself as much. I wanted to be able to interact with the person. I wanted them to see that I'm a normal guy. I mean, I would wear business casual clothes, but I wouldn't have a name tag on. I wouldn't have any type of branding because I didn't want them to think I'm a salesperson because I'm not. I truly treat my job as an educator. I go neighborhood to neighborhood, door to door, and just say, hey, this is what homes are selling for. If you've thought about it, now's a really good time to do it. And so for me over the phone, it just was harder to portray that message with a genuine um, approach than on the doors. That's, I think, what the difference was for me. Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, one thing that we know that's all backed by science and something that I coach to is a face-to-face -face meeting changes everything, the for whole sure. interaction. So it makes yeah. all the sense in the world. Uh, most people that I run into, that's why I was so intrigued to get you on the podcast, just can't put in the work. They can't pay the price like you have. So 100%. the phone for them is kind of like the next best thing, right? So yeah. because at the top of my effectiveness funnel, we call it at reverseselling.com, uh -huh. it's door knockings at the top. It's the best thing you can do. Right yeah. underneath that is phone calls because you can scale it and it's still in direct communication. Then there's some other yeah. things that go down the funnel. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. So the last question I do have for you is we rewind, you get relicensed two and a half years ago, um, knowing what you know now, what advice are you giving to the Cameron two years ago that other people getting in the industry right now can benefit from? Oh man, I, the, I know exactly what I would have changed. One, I would have door knocked my guts out until I was too busy to door knock anymore. And I would have immediately hired on help. As a real estate agent, it's super, super scary to bring on someone to help you because you're like, okay, well, this is a gravy train right now, but hiring someone's a big step. Like that's scary. If I would have done that and kept my foot on the gas with door knocking, I would have closed so much more business. And then the second thing I would have done is a truly effective follow-up system that I didn't have built out in the beginning because I went back through my contacts because I track every single door I knock and I looked up those houses and I missed at least 15 deals just wow. on the selling side that mm. I, if I just had followed up with those people, I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars I've left on the table. So door knock your guts out and have a really good follow-up plan and you will absolutely kill it in real estate. That's that, that is such great advice. And, and I couldn't agree more. Have you ever tested an OSA? So you're familiar with ISAs where people mm -hmm. hire them, make phone calls. Have you tested someone doing the initial knock for you, finding the people interested, and then you go and do the rest? Um, it's hard to do just because the compensation is tough because door knocking is such a brutal uh, task. Yeah. Um, pretty much the straight answer is no, to be honest. Okay. Not yet. Just because... I'd much rather to teach someone to fish rather than um, build my business in that sense. I'd much rather create a community and teach agents that can benefit from door knocking to build their own pond that is never ending. You know, um, yeah. I can scale my business to a certain extent, but I'm the type of agent where if, if you grow your business to a certain point, I want to share that information with people because I mean, real estate's going to get real shaky here in a bit yep. with the, the route it's going. And I think door knocking is one of those things that will be eternal. And if you know how to do it, you'll always be able to feed your family. So. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Really, really good insight um, because you're, you're really looking at the doctor model where you're focusing on the surgery. And then once you bring in the patient, a team can handle the rest, but you're not giving up that part of your business where you're bringing in the clients. Uh, which makes a lot of sense. Any issues that you had with like the whole pandemic and seeing people, did anybody ever get weird with that at all? Or did that not affect you last year? <laughs> um, I stood back on the yeah. door, but um, I was probably the person that just 
if people were affected, I didn't pay attention to it just because I was respectful. I kept yeah. my space. I didn't want to infringe on anybody, but I definitely didn't let it affect me. I still wanted to work hard and I still went out and grinded because I mean, I'm the not thing you can control. Me. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Dude. Amazing, amazing conversation. Uh, I am so glad our paths finally crossed. Yeah. If people want to connect with you, learn from you, work with you, what's the best place for them to do so? Totally. So my, my Instagram is one of the best places to connect with me. I need to do much better on my social media game. And then uh, real estate school, real estate agent school.com is a place to connect with me. It's where I'm able to teach agents pretty much everything I've learned from becoming a new agent to using door knocking to grow your business. So that's, that's that. the best place to get in touch with me. Cool, man. Well, listen, I appreciate you doing this. It's going to help a lot of people. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll have you on the show again next year, but appreciate yeah, it. What, what is your goal for 2022? Volume wise or in yeah, volume wise, man, volume wise, I'm hoping to be at least above 20 million. Cool. For this That'd year. Be great. Yeah. yeah. Well, enjoy the conversation again. I appreciate you jumping on with me today. Best of luck this year. Keep rocking and rolling and uh, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. We'll talk to you later. Yep. Talk to you soon.